Наталья, Наталья Юрьевна Сабурова. The title of the talk is Spectral Invariance for Schrodinger Operators on Periodic Discrete Graphs. Наталья Юрьевна, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the organizer of this uh, mini symposium, uh, Mikhail Igorevich Belyshev. I am I'm very glad to present my talk in, in this section. So I will speak about uh, discrete uh, Schrodinger operators <clears throat> on periodic graphs. Okay. Uh, the main, the main, Oh, okay. Uh, the main the, the main goal of this talk is to present a system of uh, spectral invariance for discrete Schrödinger operators with periodic potentials on periodic graphs. And if I have time, the, the next goal is to discuss some possible applications of this invariance to the problems of potentials as a spectrality, which is the problem to determine sets of periodic potentials for which uh, the Schrodinger operator on some fixed periodic graph uh, has the same spectrum. Uh, the problem of either spectral potentials was uh, studied only for the simplest uh, periodic graph, the d-dimensional lattice. Uh, there are some references on this slide uh, I, I should speak English. Yes, I am. I, I, I think we have some foreign uh, yeah, yes, participants. Yes, I, I continue to speak English. There are some references about uh, either spectral potential problems. Uh, but the, to, the, to the best of my knowledge, there are no results for arbitrary periodic graphs. So I decided to uh, to try to obtain some similar results for arbitrary periodic graphs. Um, okay, uh, we consider a um, connected infinite graph G embedded into the space RD. Here V is the set of its vertices and E is the set of its edges. And uh, let gamma be a lattice in the space RD with a basis A1, AD and the fundamental cell omega. Uh, we define the equivalence relation on the space ID. Two points X and Y are congruent modular the lattice gamma if the difference belong to this lattice. And we consider locally finite gamma periodic graphs G, which is graph satisfying the following conditions. The graph is invariant with respect to shifts along any vector A of the lattice gamma. And the quotient graph with respect to this equivalence relation is finite. The vectors A1, AD are called the periods of the graph. Uh, we will also call the quotient graph G star the fundamental graph. The fundamental graph is a graph on the d-dimensional torus and this graph is obtained from the periodic one by identification of its equivalent points. The fundamental graph has the vertex set V star and the H set E star, which are both uh, finite. For example, for the simplest periodic graph with minimal periods A1, A2, uh, the fundamental graph is a graph on the two-dimensional torus. Uh, it, the torus is obtained from the fundamental cell uh, by an identification of its opposite sides. The fundamental graph uh, consists of one vertex V and two loop edges at this vertex. 
Further, I will not draw torus, but only uh, vertices and edges of the fundamental gra graph, like in uh, this figure. The fundamental graph of the hexagonal lattice consists of two vertices, V1 and V2, and three multiple edges connecting these vertices. We just glue the um, different copies of this vertex V2. Um, now, we now we define the discrete Schrodinger operators on graphs. Let L2V be the Hilbert space of all square summable functions defined on the vertex set V. This Hilbert space is equipped with the standard L2 norm. And uh, we consider the discrete Schrodinger operator H given by this formula, acting on this Hilbert space. Here, A is the so-called adjacency operator given by the formula one, and Q is a real gamma periodic potential. Uh, the sum in the formula one is taken over all ages VU incident to the vertex V. It is uh, well known that the Schrodinger operator H is self-adjoint and bounded, and maybe it is more usual and physically motivated to represent H as minus delta plus the potential, where the delta is the discrete Laplacian given by this formula, kappa minus the adjacency operator. Here, kappa is the degree potential, that is the multiplication operator by um, the vertex degree kappa v, the degree of the vertex is the number of edges incident to the vertex. But since we do not impose any restriction on the potential q, except, uh, of, uh, except for periodicity, we may absorb the degree potential kappa to the electric potential q. Um, the spectral analysis of periodic operators it is usually based on the so-called Floquet block theory. I briefly explain the main ideas. Uh, I recall that we consider a gamma periodic graph G, where gamma is a lattice in the space AD with basis A1 AD and the fundamental cell omega. We introduce uh, a family of spaces L2K depending on the parameter K. In solid state physics, uh, the parameter K is called quasi-momentum, and TD is the d-dimensional torus. For each fixed K, the space L2K consists of functions F, defined on the um, vertex set of the periodic graph, and satisfying the quasi-periodic condition. Uh, when shifting the a vertex V by a vector of the lattice gamma, for some integer p1, pd, then the value f of v is multiplied by this uh, phase factor, where the triangular brackets uh, denotes the standard inner product in the space ID. Um, due to this quasi-periodic condition, uh, such a function f is uniquely determined by its values at the um, vertices of the graph from the fundamental cell omega. And if we denote uh, the, uh, the number of such vertices by nu, this the space L2K is naturally isomorphic to the new dimensional complex space. And we define the Flocky operator as the restriction of the initial Schrodinger operator H to this space L2K. Each Flocky operator is self-adjoint, and its spectrum denoted by sigma consists of new real eigenvalues, lambda 1, lambda nu, uh, labeled in non-decreasing order, counting multiplicity. Um, Fm, the family of um, the spectra of all Flocky operators, H of K, is called Cloquet, or in physics literature block spectrum. 
And the spectrum of the Clotier operator H of zero is called the periodic spectrum of H. Uh, since um, the Flaquet operator H of zero is a restriction of the Schrodinger operator uh, onto the space of uh, onto the space L2K of gamma periodic functions. So the Flaquet operator H of zero is just the Schrodinger operator on the finite fundamental graph. Uh, the functions, each function, lambda j, is continuous and piecewise real analytic on the torus TD and creates the spectral band denoted by sigma j as the range of these functions. Uh, examples of graphs of these functions are shown in the figure in the left uh, uh, one-dimensional case, the parameter k is one-dimensional. In the right figure, the parameter k is two-dimensional. From, from the Floquet block theory, uh, it follows that uh, the spectrum of the Schrodinger operator H is a union of spectra of all Floquet operators H of k, that is the union of new spectral bands where nu is the number of the fundamental graph vertices. Uh, the spectral bands may overlap, like in the left figure, may touch or may be separated by gaps. Some of them may degenerate into points. Uh, we call such band flat bands, and they are the eigenvalues of uh, the Schrodinger operators with uh, infinite multiplicity. I recall that the main goal of the talk is to present spectral invariance for the Schrodinger operator. So uh, a functional I of Q is a Flaquet spectral invariance of the Schrodinger operator H with a periodic potential Q if the identity of the Flaquet spectra for this operator for some uh, periodic potentials Q1 and Q2 implies the equality of the uh, functional values for these potentials. Here, A of K is the Flaquet adjacency operator, which is the restriction of the adjacency operator to the space L2K of functions satisfying quasi-periodic conditions. Similarly, a functional I of Q is a periodic spectral invariance of H. If the identity of the periodic spectra for this operator, for some uh, periodic potentials Q1 and Q2, implies the identity of the functional values for these uh, potentials. From this definition, from these definitions, it follows that each periodic spectral invariance is also a Flaquet spectral invariance but the inverse is not true in general. Uh, a system, we, we call a system of functionals a complete system of Flaquet spectral invariance if the identity of the Flaquet spectra for this operator for some periodic potentials Q1 and Q2 is equivalent to the, to the identity to the equality of um, the, the functional values for these potentials for all values of the parameter C. Uh, similarly, we define a complete system of periodic spectral invariance. And um, uh, as, as it usually happened with graphs, the main role in the construction of the invariance plays cycles and some their characteristics. So I recall some definitions. A path in a graph is a sequence of its consecutive edges. So this is a path. And a cycle is a closed path. This is a cycle. The first characteristic, the first simple char characteristics of a cycle is the length. The length of a cycle C denoted by the vertical bus is the number of edges in this uh, cycle. 
We will use the both notations for the for a cycle as the sequence of its edges and also as the sequence of its vertices. Um, the next cycle characteristic specific uh, for the fundamental graph is cycle index. Each cycle in the fundamental graph is obtained by factorization of a path in a periodic graph, connecting some gamma equivalent vertices V and V plus A, where A is a vector of the lattice gamma. Uh, this equivalent vertices V and V plus A of the path in a periodic graph um, in the fundamental graph are identified. So the path in the periodic graph becomes a cycle in the fundamental graph. And the index of the cycle C in the fundamental graph denoted by uh, P of C is the integer vector uh, representing the coordinates of uh, the lattice vector A with, uh, with respect to the basis of the lattice. We note that the cycle has zero index if and only if it is obtained by factorization of a cycle in the periodic graph. For example, let us consider the periodic graph called the Kagome lattice. Um, if we identify the opposite side of the fundamental cell, Fundamental cell is just the parallelogram spent by the periods of the graph, the vector A1 and A2. Then we obtain uh, the fundamental graph of this uh, periodic graph, here it is, G star. And if we consider the red cycle in the fundamental graph consisting of the ages E1, E3, E5, this cycle corresponds to the cycle of the periodic graph, the red ones, consisting of the same edges. Thus, this cycle in the fundamental graph has zero index. But if we consider another red cycle in the fundamental graph, consisting of edges E3, E4, we see that this cycle in the fundamental graph is obtained by factorization of the path in the periodic graph, red path, consisting of edges E3, E4, and connecting the vertex V1 with vertex V1 plus A2. So the index of this cycle, of this red cycle in the periodic graph, will be the coordinate of the vector A2, that is 0, 1. And the last cycle characteristic we need uh, is the cycle weight. Uh, at each vertex V of the fundamental graph G star, we add a loop denoted by EV and uh, marked in red color in this figure. This, um, this graph with um, added red loops we call the modified fundamental graph G tilde star. Uh, we assign to each edit loop the, the index zero. We also assume that each black edge of the fundamental graph has the weight omega one, and each red loop has the weight equal to the potential value QV at this vertex. So we can define the weight of the cycle C in the modified fundamental graph as the product of weights of all its edges. Uh, we note that the weight of the cycle C is a polynomial in the potential values QV at the vertices of this cycle. And the degree of this uh, polynomial is not greater than the length of the cycle C. Also, we note that each cycle in the fundamental graph, such as the cycle without red loop 
phasoid one. So each cycle in the modified fundamental graph has three characteristics, the length, the index, and the weight. And now we uh, are ready to present the promised spectral invariance. Okay. Uh, the system two is a complete, is, is a finite, complete, but not minimal system of the Floquet spectral invariance of the Schrodinger operator H with a periodic potential Q on, period, on a periodic graph G. That is, if two Schrodinger operators with different periodic potentials have the same uh, Floquet spectra, then uh, the values of the corresponding functionals I and P uh, coincide for these uh, potentials and vice versa. Uh, here, uh, nu is the number of the fundamental graph vertices, and zero is a positive integer depending on the index n and the fundamental graph g star. Uh, C and P tilde and C and P are the sets of cycles of length n and with index p in the fundamental graph g star and in the modified fundamental graph uh, tilde g star. And omega is the weight of the cycle c. Uh, this invariance i and p are polynomials of degree not greater than upper index n uh, in the potential values q at the vertices of the fundamental graph. And this uh, Floquet invariance uh, were obtained by using the trace formula for the Schrodinger operator uh, recently uh, presented in our recent uh, paper with uh, Evgeny Karatyai. Excuse me, what, what is polynomials? What does it mean that it is polynomial? Polynomial with respect to which variables? In, 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 with respect to the potential values at the vertices of the fundamental graph. Uh -huh. it, with respect to the potential. Potential acts on vertices only, not on edges. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this is a system, this is a complete system of the Floquet invariant. And uh, the system three is a system of is a complete system of the periodic spectral invariance, which is if two Schrodinger operators with different potentials have the same periodic spectrum, then the values of the corresponding functionals i n uh, for these potentials coincide and conversely. As before, here nu is the number of the fundamental graph vertices. C, n, and tilde C, n are the set of cycles of length n in the fundamental graph and in the modified fundamental graph. And omega is the weight, is the weight of the cycle C. Uh, we note that each periodic invariant I, n is the sum of the of all Floquet invariance with the same uh, lower index n over all upper index p. Now we um, compare this invariance obtained from arbitrary periodic graph with the known invariance for the d-dimensional lattice uh, obtained uh, in some papers mentioned in the beginning of, of the talk. In order to do this, let us consider how uh, look how the invariance look for the first value n, one, two, three. Uh, the Floquet spectral invariance uh, for zero upper index p is written in the left column, and for non-zero index p uh, in right column. Uh, we note that this invariance uh, are expressed in terms only 
in terms of only cycles of the fundamental graph, not modified graph. Uh, here, C and Cn is the set of cycles of length n in the fundamental graph, and the Cnp is its subset of cycle with index p. Kappa v is the degree of the vertex v. Uh, I, I recall that we use that we use the notation for cycles as the sequence of its vertices. So uh, uh, here v u denotes the cycle of length of length two passing through the vertices v and u, and v in uh, brackets denote just uh, a cycle of length one, which is loop at each vertex v. If uh, the fundamental graph has uh, no loop, has no cycles of length one, and usually it does not have, then this uh, spectral invariance become a little bit simpler, uh, the red sum or over such cycles, cycles loop vanish. And if we assume that uh, the fundamental graph is a regular graph, that is all vertices have the same degree and has no cycles of length two, then we obtain the following, sim the following system of periodic spectral invariance for uh, this system, this simple systems of periodic spectral invariance were pre or was presented in the paper for, for the d-dimensional lattice the d in the paper by Kapiller, but now we see that a lot of uh, regular periodic graphs have uh, the same system of uh, periodic spectral invariance. Uh, now we... Um, Return to the Flatier spectral invariance. I, I recall that the lower index of the Flatier invariance correspond, corresponds to the, to the lengths of cycles which appear in the construction of this invariant. And the upper index correspond to the common index of these cycles. So uh, it is useful to look at this invariant in the direction P. For, for in order to do this for each non-zero integer P, we denote by N of P the length of the shortest yes. cycle with the index P in the fundamental graph G star. Then we obtain the following families of the linear and quadratic uh, Flaquet spectral invariance. Here, the sum is taken over all cycles in the fundamental graph with index P and length N of P. And V1, Vn are the vertices of, of such cycles. And for short, Qs denote denotes the potential values at the vertex Vs. Let us look how, uh, let us look at this invariance for some concrete periodic graphs. Uh, let us start from the square lattice. Let H be the Schrodinger operator with a gamma periodic potential Q on the square lattice where gamma is the following sublattice of the two, and the fundamental cell omega of this sublattice gamma is shaded in the figure. So if we identify uh, the opposite side of this fundamental cell, we obtain the fundamental graph for, for, for this case. The fundamental graph can, has nine, nine vertices. And uh, let us uh, consider on the linear Flaquet invariance for this case. In order to do this, um, uh, let us uh, take the integer vector mm -hmm. one zero. The length of the shortest cycle is three. This cycle are shown by in red color in this figure. So um, 
indeed, each cycle has this index. Uh, I recall how to define the cycle index. For example, cycle V1, V2, V3 uh, in the fundamental graph is obtained by factorization of the red path passing through the vert starting at the vertex V1, V2, V3, and ending V1 plus A2. Thus, the index of uh, the cycle of the red cycle in fundamental graph is indeed the one zero. And uh, the invariant, the linear invariant file for the vector P one zero has the following form, the first line. Um, similarly, we can uh, each each uh, each uh, bra each brackets each sum in brackets correspond to one of these three cycles uh, shown in in red color in the figure. And the and the factor three appears since each cycle gives three cyclic permutations of vertices. But unfortunately, due to a lot of symmetry in the square lattice, this linear invariant give no new information about the potential, since we have already seen this invariant. This is just the trace of the Schrodinger operator on the fundamental graph. So there is nothing new for, for the square lattice. But maybe we will be more lucky with quadratic Locke invariants. Indeed, for the same for the same example, the square lattice, the quadratic Locke invariants six has the following form. Uh, has the following form. Uh, if we remember that the last sum is the periodic invariant. Then we obtain the following Floquet invariant, the last, the last line in this slide. And uh, similarly, we can use the quadratic Floquet invariant for the vector P equal to uh, 0, 1. So we have the following quadratic Floquet spectral invariants. We note that we can interpret it each uh, summoned in the brackets divided by uh, three as the average potential over the corresponding cycle. And indeed, this uh, quadratic, uh, such, such kind of uh, quadratic Floquet invariants were presented in, for the latest ZD. For the latest ZD were presented in this paper uh, by Kapiller and in the recent paper by Liu. Kapiller used for this purpose uh, the discrete heat equation and Liu used um, um, Lorentz series when describing the dispersion relation for the d-dimensional lattice. But I recall that we obtained this invariance for arbitrary periodic graphs. And we, use, we, we used uh, the trace formula. Um, I recall that, we, that the linear invariant uh, don't help us to obtain some additional information about the potential, but let us consider another example, uh, the uh, Kagomi lattice, and look at the linear invariant for this graph. Uh, the fundamental graph of the Kagomi lattice uh, is shown in this figure, and it has uh, three cycles of length two, red cycle, blue cycle, and, and brown cycles. And uh, the, uh, these cycles has, have distinct, distinct indices. We have already calculated the index of the cycle C2, 0, 1. And similarly, we can obtain the indices, for example, for, for blue um, cycles, it corresponds to the path starting at the vertex V1 plus A2 and ended at the vertex V1. So the index is uh, minus one zero. The linear Floquet invariant for the Kagomi lattice, uh, we have the following, the, the, the following system of linear Floquet spectral invariants, three invariants because of uh, the existence of three cycles of lengths two. And we see that this uh, linear system determine, uh, determines the potential Q uniquely. 
So for some periodic graphs, the linear, the system of linear Floquet invariance may um, determine the potential Q, the periodic potential Q uniquely. But the periodic spectral invariance, if we see, uh, gives the following. Uh, we have the following three periodic spectral invariance. And for uh, generic potentials, uh, the systems of invariance gives six potentials with the same periodic spectrum. Generic potential means that uh, all values of the potential at the vertices are pairwise pair different. And maybe the last example, but the most simple example, the one-dimensional lattice Z. Uh, let H be, a Schröd be the Schrödinger operator with a new periodic potential Q on the one-dimensional lattice Z. The fundamental graph of the one-dimensional lattice is just the black cycle of length nu. And if we add red loop, a red loop at each vertex of the fundamental graph, we obtain the modified fundamental graph, G tilde star. And if we try to calculate the Floquet uh, spectral invariance, so let us do it. Uh, in order to do this, we, um, we note that um, the cycle with non-zero index p is the cycle is the red is the is the black cycles uh, is the black cycles of lengths new. But the problem is uh, this cycle uh, contains no red loops, so this cycle uh, does not. Uh, take part in the construction of the Floquet invariant. But if we add a loop, a red loop, in order to use this cycle, the length of the cycle become greater than nu. But the, the cycles of lengths greater than nu also does not take part in the construction of the Floquet invariance. So for the one-dimensional lattice, all Floquet invariants with non-zero index p is equal to zero, which is they are they have no sense at all. And uh, the periodic spectral invariance i n uh, coincide coincide with the Floquet spectral invariant with zero index with zero upper index. Uh, so the Floquet spectrum is completely determined by the periodic spectrum, of course, it is a well-known result. And um, moreover, the potential Q is, is not uniquely determined neither by periodic spectrum nor by Cloquet spectrum. It is known uh, that for a large generic potential, uh, there are new factorial uh, isospectral potentials on the lattice Z. So maybe some short con conclusion. Uh, in this talk, we present a finite complete system of the Floquet spectral invariance for the discrete Schrodinger operators with the periodic potential Q on arbitrary periodic graph. Each of these invariants is a polynomial in the potential values Q and determined by the cycles in the fundamental graph of some fixed lengths and with some fixed index. This system of the, the Floquet spectral invariance can be used for studying the sets of either spectral periodic potentials. And for some periodic graphs, the system of the linear Floquet spectral invariance determines the potential, the periodic potential uniquely. I think that's that's all what I want to say. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very, very much. Very respectable issue. And may, maybe rather difficult. Yes, I, I understand. Maybe it is not yeah. easy to understand at first time. So yeah. Okay. Are there questions, remarks, please?
Okay, I have a question. So uh, we are trying to describe a set of the set of isospectral potentials, right? Uh, if, if it, yes, it, it, yes, we keep it, it would be nice. Yes, <laughs> we keep it as uh, as the main problem in a sense, and uh, now we some we have some additional information about invariance and how does it help to to describe isospectral graphs some, something like this not isospectral, isospectral graphs but only isospectral potential the graph sure, is fixed. sure sure i mean yeah. graph is fixed yes uh, yes yes I understand. yes um, um how it it can help um, for example um it um, for some periodic graphs. Natalia, uh, I mean, I mean, if you have a complete system of your lovely invariant uh, variance, yes, uh -huh. uh, invariance, yes, then uh, such a system determines uh, uh, the, uh, the potential uniquely, or something like this. For some periodic graphs, yes, and it would be nice to describe a set a set of such periodic graphs, for uh -huh. example. Uh -huh. And uh, these invariants uh, are also used to um, study the isospectral set for some specific potential, for example, small or large, or potential with separable uh, variation. So it it might help. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. So more questions? No more questions. Thank you again for a very interesting talk.